Come on, John! We're on a tight schedule! Oh, <laughs> this is awkward. Now what the hell are you doing in my bag of potatoes? Now, uh, drop any intention of using that there knife on me and uh, nobody gets hurt, okay? <laughs> Cut! We're not doing this anymore! Oh, uh, what, what's going on? Fuck it. No, I'm not gonna go see it with you. Crazy? He knows I hate horror movies. I don't care if it's supposed to be a good movie. <sighs> no, I hate clowns. I'm terrified of them. Well, I guess you could consider Tansy and Rose Bell clowns, but that's different. No, I really don't think there's any other clowns that I enjoy. And I'm definitely not willing to go see a movie where something I'm terrified of is stalking children. I don't want what you're selling, goodbye. Lunette and Molly. A clown and her dolly. On the big comfy couch. You gotta be brave to go outside So I'll just stay here and hide And darling, I know that it is true So I'll just stay and watch some cartoons with you So come and join me And join in the obscurity Join along And together we'll sing the song Obscurity. Chances are, if you grew up during the 1990s or early 2000s in Canada, The Big Comfy Couch is a show you're very familiar with. And for good reason, too. The adventures of Lunette the Clown and her dolly Molly were some of the best TV had to offer for preschoolers of the time. There's just something wonderful about a world full of friendly, happy-go-lucky clowns dancing their way through life all the while learning life's greatest lessons. The show wasn't afraid to cover serious topics either, covering things like death and where do clowns come from without talking down too much to the audience and all in a way kids can understand. Now I'll be the first to admit that clowns can be some of the scariest creatures to come from God's green earth. But you know, even though the whole show revolves around clowns, I don't think I ever really considered Lunette and the rest of the bunch to be quite the same thing. Everybody die! What you probably don't already know about though is the interesting life led by show creator Cheryl Wagner, involving a certain green frog, by the way, that ultimately led to the show's creation. Oh, just a second. We need good light so we can see the pictures and the words. Okay, comfy Molly? Come on, make sure you can see the pictures. Huh. Once upon a time, I think it was yesterday, a shy young girl named Shara waited for her husband to get home from clowning around the streets of Halifax. It was hard to make a living in those days, but Shara and her husband Ron had begun doing traveling puppetry. And now, Ron had found his true calling as a clown, and he was adamant about taking Shara along for the ride. After spending some six months in training with a the clown they met at a traveling circus, Shara and Ron created the Maritime Clown and Puppet Company, and together they put smiles on countless kids' faces. Tragedy struck, however, when all the stresses of the job eventually led to Cheryl and Ron's divorce. Sadness overtook her, but eventually she had to pick herself off the ground for herself and her children. In the early 1980s, Cheryl got word that world-renowned puppet master Jim Henson was holding auditions for his show Fraggle Rock in Toronto, Ontario. She couldn't let this opportunity go to waste and ended up getting a role on the show as Ma Grog. 
Aside from this, she was literally considered Jim Henson's preferred right hand when he performed for the series. Next thing she knew, she was working on the Sesame Street movie Follow That Bird as Miss Finch. There she met her future star Allison Court and even had a touching moment with a certain frog. Cheryl had a special one-on-one -on -one conversation with the one and only Kermit the Frog and it was at this moment she knew everything she'd been through so far was worth it. Her work then led her to the set of Mr. Dress Up in the early 90s. Cheryl had a wonderful time with the show and was honored to work with such a huge Canadian icon, but she wanted to do more. She wanted to come up with a TV show her very own self. One day, Cheryl's friend Grindle asked her to write a show for her that she could star in. Cheryl got to work and came up with a wonderful idea. However, for Grindle, Cheryl had bad news. How could the star of a show about a young clown be in her late 30s? So Cheryl made her the granny instead and chose her friend Allison Court, whom she worked with on Follow That Bird and Mr. Dress Up for the role of Lunette the Clown. Making a TV show turned out to be a lot more work than Cheryl thought. So, she worked with fellow puppeteer Robert Mills, who also worked on Fraggle Rock, to help her produce the series. And before she knew it, kids all across Canada were enjoying the big comfy couch. Huh. Wow, did you like that story, Molly? You did? Oh, good. It's no secret that I'm a huge fan of Canadian kid shows, and let me start by saying the Big Comfy Couch is seriously one of the greatest the True North has to offer. Which is no surprise seeing as it got its start in the infancy of YTV. It started airing as one of the first original programs for the Trios block in 1992 and achieved an award of excellence for children's television in the following year. The show lasted for five years in its original run and continued to air reruns on YTV for the next few years, as well as on Trios TV when the channel got off the ground in November of 1997. By the way, happy 20th to my buddy Kush and the rest of you tree townies! Look, even Trios remembered you guys on Facebook. The Big Comfy Couch was a huge success in the 90s. I mean a really huge success. Unlike our previously mentioned friends, it had merch out the wazoo. Countless VHS tapes were released covering most of the show's run, books, plushies of everything down to the couch itself, name it, you got it. But why was it so successful? Well, let's find out. But wait, I can't rightfully review a show about a big comfy couch on this rickety wooden chair now, can I? So, only one thing to do. That's better. Well, if we're trying to figure out why a show about clowns on a big comfy couch was so popular, we'd better take a good look at the characters. And if this isn't the first you've heard of the show, I'm sure most of these clowns need no introduction. Except for this guy, who the frick is he? But for you newbies, or if you just need a refresher, there was of course Lunette and Molly, the clown and her dolly who live on the big comfy couch, Granny Garbanzo, Lunette's grandma who lives next door to her with her cat Snickle Fritz, and Major Bedhead, the local clown courier who delivers mail to the characters. Primarily letters to Lunette from her Auntie Macassar. Uh, yes, I'd like to file a missing persons report. Lunette was played wonderfully by Allison Court, also known for her role in the Resident Evil games as Claire Redfield. The best way to describe Lunette is a friend. Honest, she feels like a real friend a lot more than many other kid shows that try to do the same thing. Lunette is a kind young clown who takes very good care of Molly and is constantly learning life lessons in the world around her. As Lunette learns, we learn. And I think that's the best way to do morals in a kid show. Nobody likes things being shoved in your face, especially not when you're a kid. So take your time with it, spend an episode developing the lesson, and kids will get a lot more out of it. I know I did with the show. Of course, Molly can be a bit stubborn, so if it's not Lunette learning, it's her. Molly is- Wait a second. Molly. I'm angry, Kush! Well, that's not gonna help. Mm-hmm. Like this. I'm higher than the clouds that rain. Like that. I think that's enough now, Molly. Uh, oh, dear. Okay, stop, Molly. Please, please stop! What is it with these kid shows and their love for drugs? Really, the big comfy couch could be considered a character within itself. Not only is it huge and looks extremely comfy, it's also magic. As Lunette often states, it has everything but the kitchen sink in there, which then she usually hauls out. So I guess that means the couch has literally anything you could ever want in there. Hmm, I wonder.
Eureka! Aside from the couch, every set featured in the show has the sense of simplicity and happiness to them. There's a real effect of childlike aspect here, and it really works with the atmosphere the show is going for. They all feature their own little details that you'll pick up on as you watch the show, such as the painting of the clown in the couch room, or the rooftops of Clown Town at Granny's Garden. These details really show the amount of thought and effort put into designing the show. Each set lends itself to the common elements of the show, uh, segments if you will. These segments consist of the introduction, the clockwork stretch, which Lunette's promised herself to do every day, the Foley's family, which takes place in Lunette's dollhouse to the right of the couch, the short little dust bunny segment under the couch, and an adventure to Granny's garden that usually takes up the second act of the episode. The Granny's garden segments are arguably the most important part of each episode, as it's where the majority of the characters come into play and is often considered the teachable moment of the... Hubba what? Is that a... Nah, it can't be. Well, there's nothing else it could be. That is 100% a hookah. Something used for smoking tobacco or cannabis. On the big comfy couch. The same show with a doll called Molly. And yes, I know it's supposed to be a bubble blower thing on the show, but the resemblance can't be denied. It's either a hookah or a bomb. Granny and Lunette have joined a drug club. <laughs> Is. It's really neat. Oh, that's for sure. Any thoughts, Kush? No, I'm not gonna find Molly's number for you. Well, moving on. The show ends with Lunette reading Molly a story from what I like to call the Book of Endless Possibilities, followed by a 10 second tidy performed by Lunette or sometimes Molly with the help from Lunette. This obviously teaches kids to clean up after themselves. I think it's safe to say that these segments work too. Anybody who watched the show as a kid is likely to remember the 10 second tidy or the clockwork stretch. Don't mean we listened, but we remember. Well, actually I was going to do a clockwork stretch for this video, but I found out that Dare to be Stupid show actually did a better job than I ever could. Don't you just love the internet? Now for something I've put off talking about until now, which is such a shame because it's one of the best and most memorable parts of the show. The music. The music of this show is nothing short of special. Who could forget the classic theme song? The music played during the clockwork stretch, or even the 10 second tidy. A lot of episodes also feature a special song directly relating to the theme of the episode. Such examples include Molly's belly button song and the big comfy plane. I think you'd be surprised by just how much you remember from these songs alone. So it's a real shame the current owners of the big comfy couch marketing rights are so careful with sound clips from the show. In truth, I'm scared to even show a snippet. I mean honestly, if you're gonna upload the entire show to YouTube and leave the episodes people had already uploaded up anyway, why be so hard on the content ID? I guess I can see why they do this, and I mean no disrespect or harm to them. In fact, I'm forever grateful for leaving the old videos on YouTube. But I really think they should be more lenient when it comes to the content ID system. It makes it scary to even think about making a fan video. The show ended its initial run on YTV at the end of Season 5 in 1996. And that's right, I said it's initial run, because in 2002, new episodes were produced by Radical Sheep who partnered with several other television creators, including Trios TV, for 13 additional episodes. Most of the cast returned for the season, with the exception of Auntie McCasser, who was replaced by the very similar character Uncle Chester. Fun fact, when I was little I emailed Uncle Chester through the Big Comfy Couch website and asked if Auntie McCasser was his sister. His reply stated that she was his soul sister. Wonder exactly how close they are, hmm? Then after season 6, everything was all done and over with. Honest, uh... What? No, 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 I really don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> yeah, they, they, uh... They made a seventh season without Allison Court. See, Allison Court was pregnant throughout the making of season 6, and was just divorced from her husband around the time they were about to make season 7. 
So life was simply getting too hectic for a single mother with all the tours and everything that come with the job. So the role of Lunette the Clown was given to theater star Ramona Gilmore Darling. And well, I mean, she tried. While some people evidently really liked her as Lunette, for me, it's like it changed the whole show. Not only did she sound nothing like Allison's Lunette, she acted nothing like her either. She acted way too childish for my taste, and also strangely loose, slow, and awkward. This would be alright if they meant Lunette to be younger in this season, but no, she's supposed to be old enough to go to Clown Town, something that she was always too young to do before. The Clown Town sequences are no fun either. They just don't really seem to fit with the rest of the show. As much as I hate to say it, Season 7 was a mess. And funnily enough, it was the longest season of the show, totaling in at 22 episodes, and was also a major reason for the show's popularity in the US, as ratings started to go up on PBS. And even though I believe the show was broadcast in the US before then, it never really had as much steam as over here in Canada. Uh, Lunette is a beautifully created dress doll and is sure to become a collector's items. Um, I guess. <laughs> she become a collector's item. <laughs> With the end of the seventh season, so ended the big comfy couch. And even though it kind of ended on a sour note, it's safe to say that this didn't put a damper on my memories of the show whatsoever. After all, the Big Comfy Couch was literally the first thing I saw when we got a subscription to Trios TV all the way back in the early 2000s. Being one of my earliest memories, it's clear to see why it means so much to me. When I think about it, Big Comfy Couch was a show I took for granted as a kid. For the most part, it aired in the afternoon all the way up to when it was pulled, and even though I loved it very, very much, it felt like it would be on the station in some way forever. That's not the case, however, as the Big Comfy Couch stopped airing altogether on February 27, 2011, same day all the other Trios classics died. And while the internet is still trying to dig up the likes of Treetown and Crazy Quilt, we've had the entirety of the Big Comfy Couch online for a while now, which really goes to show the impact the show made on its audience. I think a lot of it has to do with how the show treated us. As I've said before, it always talked about topics kids should know about in a way they could understand. Then there's a warm feeling while watching the show, the wonderful and memorable characters, and the music. I doubt I'll ever forget that crazy clown courier, or the clown girl who won the world's heart. But why clowns? I'm pretty sure many people would agree that clowns can be pretty scary. Well, in an interview conducted by Hilary MacDonald, where I got some of my information about Cheryl's past by the way, Cheryl says that clowns see the world the way kids do. She says that kids are often lost because their adults are lost in thought and a clown sees it their way. So to all you scary clowns out there, I say you're not really clowns. You shouldn't be considered the same thing as Lunette and Molly as they go against everything you stand for. With all the scary clown culture stirred up by last year's clown apocalypse, it makes me worry that kids who discover the big comfy couch in the future will be too scared to watch it when they find out it's about clowns. That'd be a real shame, you know. After watching the show, I can safely say that not all clowns are out to get you. Not all clowns stalk the night or eat children. Some clowns just want to see you smile. And to me, that's a beautiful thing. Oh, nothing like a kid show to make you tired. Hey Kush, want to have a dream? Thanks for stopping by guys. I hope you have wonderful dreams tonight. Toodles. Kush? I'm not gonna give you Molly's number, go to sleep. What the hey? For PJ John. Bedhead, what did they do to you? 
What's the matter? I thought everybody loves a good postcard. N no, not not Ronald. What's the matter, John? I thought you weren't afraid of clowns anymore. <laughs> it's only fun if they run. Plenty of uh, packages to deliver. Uh, not a whole lot of time. You know. You know what? Keep, 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 uh, keep, keep my fucking knife. You know what? Uh, remember, use it. Cherish our time together. Remember me. All right. I'll see you uh, next time. Next time you get a parcel, I'll, I'll see you then. All right. Have a nice day. <sighs> well, now that that's over, maybe I can get some decent shut eye around here. I'm really tired, and I need to start working on the next review soon. But thanks for coming over. It sure was something, wasn't it? But don't worry about me. Kush will keep me safe. Won't you, Kush? <sighs> Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. And the man-child jumped over the moon. <laughs>